play Texas 42, you're going to need a set of double six dominoes and four players. The first thing you want to do is take all the dominoes and turn them face down. Once this is done, we are going to shuffle the dominoes, which is commonly referred to as the shake. And we're just going to do that by mixing these all up just like this. The shake is over. The person who draws the domino with the highest number of pips will get the opportunity to bid last. So everyone's going to go around and they're going to pick a domino, flip it over. So right now, these guys are out. He's got two, he's got six showing, he's got three, and he also has six showing. So this player and this player, they've tied. So what they'll do is they're going to redraw. We've got the six three here, and the double two here. We're going to go by the number of pips on the domino. So we've got four pips showing here, we've got nine pips here. For this demonstration, I'm just going to turn the dominoes face up so that you can see what the players have. Normally you want to keep that information private to yourself, right? So there we have it. These two players, the opposing team, they've drawn their dominoes. Now, since this guy over here, since he won, he had the highest domino, uh, he is going to draw the last seven dominoes. Which means that at this point, it's my turn. I'm going to pick my seven dominoes. And again, normally, you're only going to be able to see these. You don't want everyone to see your dominoes, right? It's like most games. And then he gets, the player over here, he gets whatever's left. He's going to bid last. The first bidder will be this player here, followed by this player, followed by this player, and lastly, with the guy who won the draw. The next step is for each player to look at their dominoes and to figure out how many tricks they can pick up. And ultimately, they're trying to figure out how many points they can get between them and their teammate. And they want to bid that. Bidding starts at 30, and it goes up by 1 until you get to 42. That's the maximum number of points that you can get in this game. Now... There are five dominoes that are considered counter dominoes or dominoes that are worth points. What you want to do is look at the dominoes and count the number of pips on the domino total. So any domino that has 10 pips, such as the double five or the four six, those dominoes are worth 10 points. Any dominoes whose pips add up to five those dominoes are worth five points. So that includes the one four, the five blank, and the three two. All of these dominoes are worth five points. To get points in this game, you've got to do two things. You've got to win the trick, which is worth one point, and then you have to win tricks that include counter dominoes like the five five, the four six, which are worth ten points, the three two, which is worth five, five blank, and the one four. That's how you score points in this game. Okay, so at this point, I'll get into analyzing the hands. Right away, when I'm looking at this hand, I've got the double four and the four two. We also have the four three. So we have a pretty good trump suit, potentially. The only problem is that there is the four six and the four five before you get to the four three. I might also choose blank. I've got the double blank got the blank five and the blank two. I could go with with 30 points on the blank. I might do it. Uh, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Moving on to the next player. So this is really a phenomenal hand. You could do a couple things here. You could, uh, you could set up your ones as your trump suit and knowing that you would have one, two, three of the highest trumps and then these doubles are going to draw out. Uh, tricks as well. Um, the only concern I have here is if one player had the other four ones. Highly unlikely to have one player have accumulated all of the ones. Um, with that in mind, what I would do with this hand, 
pretty phenomenal considering it was random. I would actually bid 42, which would mean I have to win all of the tricks. I've got to win all the points. If I was really confident about it, which I really am looking at this hand, I would bid 84. Now, the downside of bidding 42 or 84, it's really easy to get set. Um, and when you get set, you don't get a point for winning that round. But still, with this hand like this, I would say 84, and that bidding would continue to go around. This player looking at his hand, we've got a couple fours, but we don't have the double four. We've got a couple blanks, but we don't have the double blank. And this is definitely a pass hand. This is a weaker hand than this guy has over here. And lastly, we get back to the guy who won the, the draw. Um, he's got one, two, three, four, five sixes, but he doesn't have the double six. So it's definitely something to be concerned about. Um, it just means that one of these sixes, he's going to play it and he's going to lose it right away. Not so scary because he has the 4-6. This is a, this is a hand, I, I would bid on it. I would bid probably 30 and set 6 as my trump. But everything is set in stone. This player has bid 84. He's agreed to pick up all the tricks. Now let's get into the gameplay. So gameplay is going to work like this. This player has bid 84. He's agreeing to pick up all of the tricks. If he doesn't, the other team is going to get two marks. Um, and he's also going to set his trump to be once. The idea here is to draw out all of the trumps. So this player would play the double one. And this player here is going to look at his hand. If he has a one, he has to play it. In this case, he's got one, two, three ones. He's most likely, he's not going to play the one four because he doesn't want to give up points if he can avoid it. He's going to hold that towards the end. He's probably going to give his weakest trump, which is going to be the one blank. Okay? So I'm going to turn these like this. This player over here has a one. He's going to play it like that. This player over here does not have a one, so he is going to play the weakest domino in his hand. Most likely, that's going to be this blank too. This is going to be uh, what you call an off. He's going to throw off this domino. He's going to get rid of it because it's highly unlikely that he's going to win a trick with this domino. So at this point, this team here has won one trick. We're going to slide these four dominoes off to the side and we're going to leave them face up. That's how the game is played. Now, because he won the trick, he's going to lead with the next trick. So in this case, what I would do is I'm going to continue to try to get all of the trumps out. I want to keep playing trumps, in this case ones, until all of the players are out of trumps. So again, this player is not going to play this 1-4. He's not going to give him points. He's going to play the 1-3. This player over here has no ones, so he's going to get rid of his weakest domino. In this case, the weakest domino is going to be possibly this blank 6. It's a little bit of a judgment call. This player over here, again, he is out of ones, so he is going to throw off a domino. He's not going to throw off this blank five because it's worth five points so he's also not going to throw off this two three because that's worth five points so he's probably going to get rid of this four two all right this player has won that uh, trick we're going to slide that off to the side and looking at the points it was worth one point right so right now this team these two guys here they've got two points towards their their 84 bid. So this player is still in control. At this time what I would do is I would play the 1-5. Again, 1 is our trump suit. This player has to play a trump if he has it. He only has one remaining trump, the 1-4. This is what this player was looking for. He wants to get this last trump. Over here this player is going to get rid of their weakest domino. Um, most likely I'm going to call that the the 2-6. Over here, he has no one. He's going to get rid of his next week, his domino that doesn't have points. For me, that would be this 4-3. I'm going to get rid of it. Five points plus the one point for the trick, it's worth six points. So this team is now up to eight points. Now because this player won the last trick again, it's going to be his turn to lead. At this point, you could take a look over here at the dominoes that have been discarded and you could figure out maybe some sort of strategic sequence to, to play these dominoes. 
Um, for what we're doing, I'm going to throw caution to the wind. I'm not really going to analyze this stuff over here. I'm just going to start with the double six and work my way down. So here we go. This guy's going to play the double six. This guy looks at his dominoes. He doesn't have any sixes, so he's going to throw off his weakest domino. That does not have any sort of point total because he doesn't want to give the other team points. Most likely, that domino is going to be the blank three. Over here, this guy's looking at his sixes. He's got a lot of options here. Uh, because he knows that his his teammate is going to pick up the trick, he's going to get rid of this 6-4. He's going to give their team 10 points. Um, and he's been paying attention, and he knows that all of the trumps have been played, because he can see that over here. This guy's going to look at his dominoes, and, you know, the blank 5 is worth 5 points. The 2-3 is worth 5 points. This is worth... Uh, this this maybe is an off, the double blank and the double four. He really doesn't want to give anybody points, but he also wants to be able to pick up tricks later on. So he can probably see that the four six has already been played. He's going to get rid of this double four. All right, so now this team just won this trick. So it's worth 10 points plus one point for the trick. This, this trick was worth... 11 points on top of their 8 points. They're up to 19 points right now. They still have not, they're not to their 84 bid. All right, because this guy won the last trick, he's going to lead again. I'm going to make it easy. I'm just going to go move down the line from double sixes to double fives. Uh, from here, he's going to look at his dominoes, most likely get rid of the 5 3 because it's weaker than the 5 4. In this case, there's not a lot of difference. No points involved. This player over here is going to look at his fives. Now, there's no points involved. He wants to stay in the best position possible to win tricks. So he's going to hang on to this 5-6, but he's going to play this 5-2. He's got to play a 5 if he has it. Same thing here. This player has the 5 blank. He has no other fives. He's got to play the 5 blank. So this hand right here was worth 10 points and 5 points plus 1 point worth 16 points on top of their 19 points that they've already won. 16 points. That takes them up to 35 points, but they're not done yet. They've got to win everything. This player here won the trick. He's going to lead again. He's going to play the double three. There's nothing over here. This guy's going to play the four blank. He's got to play his three six. He's got to play his three two. There you go. This player won the trick. This this trick was worth 5 points plus 1 point for the trick. 6 points on top of their 35. They are up to 41 points now. This guy won the trick. He's going to leave it with the double 2. And from here, I'm going to play the 5-4. Play the 5 6, the double. So this takes them up to 42 points because this trick right here is worth just one point. There's no counter dominoes in it. And that concludes the game.